Hello and welcome. Our goal in this video is to write two equations that gives us the graph of these lines on this plane right here. So what's an equation we could write? And I group them for the red and green. That's the way I see it. We can write two equations for these. And there might be a way to write it in one. If you have that solution, I'd love to see it. But here is the idea. Um, we're going to use the y-intercept and slopes to look for a pattern in the red lines and the green lines and then try to write a general equation based on those patterns. What am I talking about? Well, um, before we get into it, you might just pause the video and get a sense of this graph and see if you can figure it out. When you're ready, press play and proceed, and we'll check it out. All right, so let's look at these red lines right here. Um, you know, I, with a problem like this, you look at it, it's just like, oh my gosh, there's so much going on right here. It's normal to have that kind of emotional reaction and freak out. But then take a deep breath and remember that your math teacher and most, most math um, activities where they want you to enjoy yourself involve some kind of nice pattern. So even though the pattern might not be obvious right away, hopefully if we do a little bit of hunting, we can find that pattern. And we won't have to go through every single line. Ugh. So here we have this line right here. Okay, let's start there. Now if we look at this line, um, let me just, this pen is way too huge. Let me just narrow this down. Let's go to size. Four. Okay, how's that look? Better. Okay, so this line right here, what do we notice? Well, I notice that the y-intercept is here, okay? And I notice that that, that y-intercept is five. And then I notice that the slope, if I go over to the x-intercept, that's the point negative two, zero. Well, if I look at my slope, it's going back two, down five, right? So that just means that the slope is back two, negative two, and down five, negative five. So that's the way I looked at it. That's the slope, positive slope, two negatives, right? We define slope by dividing the rise and the run, and two negatives divide to a positive. So this slope is positive. Five divided by two is two and a half. So let's call this, let's just write it as our first equation. Y is going to equal Y. Well, our intercept was five plus 2.5 x for the slope. So let me just clear this off now. Let's see if I can mess this up. Okay. So the next one, that was the first line. Next line, let's, let's go over further so you can find anything. I notice, okay, all right, it's a little bit less stressful now. The red line, see these intercepts here? I see how they're going down. They're going 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. It's hard to see right here. I think the green's overlapping with the red, but there's a line there all the way down to negative 5. So I should have a list. It's going to go from 5, then to 4, then to 3, and then I'm not going to write them all because I really don't feel like doing that. All the way down to negative 5. All those intercepts are there. What about our slopes? Is there some kind of nice pattern in the slopes? Well, look at our next line here. And again, this doesn't have to be the second line you look at. It just happens to be the second one I'm looking at here. Right here. Boom. So this line, what's the slope? Well, we're going down 4 and back 2. So negative 4 divided by negative 2, which is positive 2. So notice that the intercept went from 5 to 4, went 1, but the slope only went up down a half, right? The intercept goes down by 1, the slope goes down by a half. If the next one goes down to 1.5, then we have our pattern and we're all set. Well, what does it? Let's see. Let me clear off this grid so we can check it out. Boom. All right, next one. Uh, three. What's the slope? Well, it's going down to the same point. They're all going back to this point, negative 2, 0. That's this point right here. It's negative 2, 0. So I'm going down 3, back 2. So it's negative 3 over negative 2. Right, negative 3 divided by negative 2 equals 3 over 2. And 3... Cut in half, essentially, is 1.5. Yay! The pattern holds. And this is a yay moment because now we know all the equations. If we just keep writing this, it's a recursive pattern. We can just follow the step before it. And eventually, if we go all the way here, it's going to go all the way down to a negative slope. Right? These lines, as you, once you pass the zero threshold, the flat line, these slopes are going down. And this slope is a mirror image of our very first slope here, right? It's kind of reflected on the x-axis. So if before the slope was positive 5, wouldn't it be nice if this slope was negative 5? 
so, sorry, before if the slope was positive two and a half, wouldn't it be nice if the slope was negative two and a half? And aha, uh -huh, it is, right? We go down five, but up two on the x-axis. So that's negative two and a half. So I'm going to put, uh, to fit the pattern, I'm going to write plus negative 2.5x. But you could just write negative 5 minus 2.5x. Now, if I was to write this all using the list um, short notation on Desmos, that's where I got this graph, if you use square brackets for a list, it would look like this. y equals 5 to negative 5. The order that I'm going to put it in is important. The positive is being matched first. Plus from 2.5 down to negative 2.5. So I'm going I'm to actually write this down here because I ran out of room. Let me just move this. Oops. I want you to see what the equation looks like here. So we go from 2.5, and, and I get to tell it to go to 2 next because automatically it seems the default for Desmos is to go every whole value. So we'll go every half value. So now Desmos knows. You go from 2.5 to 2, it's a half value. Keep doing half value jumps all the way to negative 2.5. Close your list, x. And this one equation will actually graph this whole list up here. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that awesome? Now let's do the same thing with our greens. Now, I noticed that the green collection of lines, is, it's just like the red collection. And it's just shifted over to the right. Now there's a way to do that using func function translations. And uh, I can make another video on that if you want to see it. But here I want to focus on slope and intercept because that's what we're learning. So what am I talking about? Well, I know it's so that the green lines, again, our intercepts go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all the way down to negative 5. So I noticed right away that our intercepts are going to be the same. 5, 4, 3, dot, 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 all the way down to negative 5. However, something is different about the slopes. And what you might notice right away is that the early lines, the starting lines, like right here, this slope is a negative slope. This slope... The next one is also negative. Instead of before it was positive, now they're negative to start with. They go from negative slopes to positive slopes. And before we start off with these positive slopes, they went to negative slopes. So that's going to be reversed. And that means the hypothesis is that we're starting out with negative. So maybe it starts off like this, plus negative 2.5x. And then plus go up a half because these are by halves. Right, so the same steepness as before, negative 2x plus negative 1.5x, all the way up to 2.5x. Now, I'll leave it to you to check it, but those are correct. And the decimal of shorthand would be something like this. y equals, do all the intercepts from 5 dot 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 to negative 5. And now we're just going to reverse the second list. We don't start at 2.5 this time. We start off at negative 2.5, and, and we go to negative 2, and then up to, uh, sorry, 2.5. And, and then we'll close our bracket and put an x there. And that's our equation. Now, I, I don't have Desmos. I'm not going to open it right now, but you can check here. I'm not sure if it matters if we put this comma or not, if we need it. Those might be extraneous. You might not need them. But anyway, so you're given a graph like this. Oh, my gosh, emotional reaction, freak out. Then step back and think, okay, is there a pattern that I can use here, or do I have to figure out all 11 lines individually, right? Is there a way to make this as easy as possible, to use the patterns of mathematics? All right, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this.